guys, Mr. Backberg here. In this video, we're going to deal with inscribing polygons within circles. When we're dealing with inscribed polygons, what we're going to be dealing with are polygons where all of their vertices or corners are on the outer edge of a circle. So if this is our circle, then we can draw in different shapes where all of their vertices or corners are on the outer edge of the circle. So this is an example of an inscribed triangle. Now that circle around the outside also has a special name. The circle that contains the vertices of an inscribed polygon is called a circumscribed circle. Now we can inscribe more than just triangles within a circle. We can inscribe quadrilaterals or pentagons or hexagons. There are all different kinds of shapes that we can inscribe within a circle. But with each shape, there are some special properties that hold true when we're inscribing them within circles. Our first property is dealing with inscribing a right triangle within a circle. And our property says, if you're going to inscribe a right triangle within a circle, then its hypotenuse has to be a diameter of the circle. So here's a circle with a right triangle inscribed within it. We've got triangle ABC. Now because angle B is a right angle, that means the side across from it, AC, has to be the hypotenuse. And with what our property just said, if we inscribe a right triangle within a circle, then its hypotenuse has to be a diameter. So AC in this picture has to be a diameter of our circle. Now this will also work the other way around. If we have a circle with a triangle inscribed in it, and one of the sides of that triangle is a diameter, then automatically that triangle has to be a right triangle. Our next property deals with inscribing quadrilaterals within a circle. Now not every kind of quadrilateral can be inscribed within a circle. One property that has to hold true is, in order to inscribe a quadrilateral within a circle, its opposite angles have to be supplementary, which means that the opposite angles have to add up to 180 degrees. So in our picture, we've got our quadrilateral DEFG inscribed in this circle. This only works if angle G and angle E add up to 180 degrees, and also angle D and angle F have to add up to 180 degrees. The opposite angles in a quadrilateral have to be supplementary in order to inscribe it within a circle. Now in this picture we've got a quadrilateral inscribed within a circle and we're given two angle measures of the quadrilateral but we're missing the other two. So we're going to use the property that says opposite angles have to be supplementary in order for us to figure out what our x and our y values are going to be. So in this picture one pair of opposite angles that we're dealing with are angles h and j. So those two angles have to add up to 180 degrees. Now we know angle H is 80 degrees, but we don't know the measure of angle J. That's our Y that we're going to end up trying to find. So what we can do is we can just subtract this 80 over to the other side, and then our angle J, or that Y value in our picture, has to be a 100 degree angle. Now we can do similar things with angle K and angle I. We know that K is 75 degrees, so if we take 180 minus that angle, because those angles have to be supplementary, then we should be able to figure out that angle I has to be 105 degrees. Again, in this picture we've got a quadrilateral inscribed within a circle. What we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out our A and our B values by using the fact that opposite angles have to be supplementary or add up to 180 degrees. So I'm going to start with the angles that have A's in them. We've got 2A on top and 2A on bottom. Because these are opposite angles, they have to add up to 180 degrees. So if we go 2A plus 2A, that has to equal 180 degrees. Now we can combine like terms on the left hand side, so 2A plus 2A is 4A equals 180 degrees. And then our last step is going to be to divide by 4 in order to get our A value, which if we take 180 divided by 4, we get 45. 
Now we can do similar things in order to find our b value. I'm going to take 4b plus 2b equals 180. On the left hand side we can add those together and get 6b equals 180. And then if we divide both sides by 6, then b is 30. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.